Welcome to this edition of Valor Media. This is episode number 104 for January 31st, 2022, and I'm your host, Mark Appenzeller. Today, I'd like to talk to you about clutter. Now, I don't know how things are at your house, but my wife and I have recently decided that when it comes to clutter, we simply have way too much of it. And for us, most of our clutter has managed to find its way into our basement. Now, maybe you don't have a basement, but almost everybody has some designated space that they've set aside as the place to store stuff. And as a result, a lot of stuff winds up there. Maybe it's an unused spare bedroom or an attic scuttle or a corner of the garage. But wherever it is, it has been decided that it's okay to put things there. And so a lot of things wind up there. And it's kind of like a magnet with iron fillings. Because it's the designated storage space, it gets back to what Aristotle said, nature abhors a vacuum. Empty spaces love to get filled with more stuff. Now, with us, our kids grew up, moved out, got married, and yet they still have stuff in our basement. Now, I'm not pointing fingers. I've been out of my parents' house for over 35 years, and I still have stuff in their basement. It's really funny how that happens, but it all comes down to clutter. And that day when you recognize things are out of control. Now, our basement is unfinished, so it's not like we're using it for other family activities. It's definitely not a place that you would want to plop down and binge watch TV for five hours. And so that tends to kind of justify this idea of putting things there. If you have some item that you don't know what to do with, carry it down to the basement. If there's something that you're pretty sure you won't use for six more months, carry it down to the basement. A lot of things have been carried down to the basement. Now, rest assured, we're not hoarders. Things aren't piled to the ceiling, but it's starting to get out of control. Have you ever had a situation where you suddenly recognize the floor space is disappearing? When that starts to happen, you can enter a realm that I really don't like being in where you have to navigate by what I call the sumo wrestler stance. There's so little available floor space that you have to kind of firmly plant one foot, delicately balance yourself, and then swing the other leg over the junk trying to come down in a couple of square inches of bare floor on the other side. That's a miserable way to move. Or maybe it's reached the point that you can't find things anymore. I've certainly gone through that with tools. There are times that I'll look for something. I know I have two or three of them, but I can't find them. And if it's a small tool that's relatively inexpensive... Instead of spending an entire Saturday afternoon rummaging around trying to find it, I'd rather make a five-minute trip to the hardware store and just buy another one. But either one of those things are telltale signs that it's time to start decluttering. A couple of years ago, our daughter got us interested in some videos by a lady named Marie Kondo. She's basically made an entire career out of teaching people to declutter. She wrote a best-selling book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing, and it's pretty amazing. Now, Marie Kondo uses one basic guideline. She has people pick an item up, hold it in their hand, and ask themselves, does this item spark joy? If it does, they keep it. If it doesn't, they get rid of it. Now, amazingly enough, clutter is something that doesn't just lurk in our basement or our garage or our attic. It also lurks in our vocation. Our organizations and businesses get cluttered. We go through stuff on a daily basis, operating in routines that go on month in and month out, and somehow in the middle of all of that, we can't see the trees for the forest. We get engulfed in what we do to the point that sometimes we don't even realize what it is we do. And things that should operate smoothly no longer do so because there's just too much organizational 
clutter. When that happens, it's time to find some elbow room. And that's what I'd like to talk about today in an episode that I'm entitling Yard Sale. Because let's face it, when we discover that our basement or garage is bursting at the seams, many times we resort to having a yard sale. We have items that we know we don't want anymore, and we want to get rid of them. Now, when my wife and I start talking about a strategy for decluttering our basement, I always have these grandiose illusions of posting a bunch of items on eBay and making a tidy little profit. But the reality is, I probably won't do that. I have a couple of items that I definitely think are worth something, and I'd like to try to see what I can get. But eBay, cool as it is, can also kind of be a pain in the neck. And especially if you're trying to sell a lot of small items, it can be just too much hassle to be worth it. When you have a yard sale, well, that's a little more streamlined. And when it comes to doing that, you're not trying to make money. That's not the overarching goal. The real goal is to just eliminate the clutter and to buy back some free space. If you can make a nominal amount in exchange for doing it, that's a plus, but it's not the main emphasis. It's really all about just relinquishing our grasp on items that don't serve a purpose anymore or don't have a sentimental value for us, something that justifies us keeping them in our possession. But how does that translate over into a vocational setting. Marie Kondo picks up an item and asks, does this spark joy? But how many things in our work settings would ever spark joy? I think if we pick up an item in our vocational setting, the question we need to ask is, does this spark productivity? Is it something that's actually causing us to operate efficiently and effectively? And many times that comes down to just the basic processes of what we do, the nuts and bolts of how we carry out business day to day. Does it spark productivity? And does it spark creativity? Because sometimes we get so mired in carrying out what it takes to do our job, we don't have time left over to dream and plan. We don't have time to collaborate. We don't have time to think outside the box and try new things that are out of our comfort zone that can take our entire business in a very healthy direction we would never go in otherwise. Now let me share something with you that might sound a little bit counterintuitive. When you go to declutter in a business or an organization, sometimes the best way to get rid of stuff is to bring some new stuff in. And let me explain what I mean. Think about what you do every day at work. Whether you're a business owner or an employee or a team member or a staff person, you go through different functions and routines on a daily basis. But is that all written down somewhere? And not only is it written down, but does it exist in a tangible format that anybody can access and understand? If you're suddenly unexpectedly out of the office, can somebody else fill your shoes? Are there resource materials that can guide somebody through the process? Maybe you have processes in your company, but they leave a little bit to be desired. Are there certain things that you do, but you only do them once a year, and nobody really can remember exactly what the steps are to get it done? You might have just a skeletal outline scribbled somewhere, but nobody really knows the ins and outs, and because nobody does it on a daily basis, nobody feels familiar and comfortable with it. And whenever it has to be done, Everybody's sweating bullets because nobody's quite sure what it takes to make it happen. You possibly don't have any documentation in your business. Maybe you rely on the fact that the people that work there know what they're doing. Head knowledge is wonderful, but it's dangerous. Because if you rely on people carrying all that knowledge around with them, what happens if they're no longer there? According to the business technology company Signavio, 62% of organizations have about 25% of their processes documented, but only 2% of organizations have all of their processes documented. And for me, I really believe it's all or nothing. It might be tempting to feel a certain level of confidence and security if you have a couple of your main processes written down, but what about the small stuff? 
Because the thing is, in a business, it's really easy to assume that different staff people just kind of operate in a bubble, but that's not the case. Even seemingly unrelated processes on some level rub elbows with each other. And even policies that determine the why, the strategy of how you operate, you may have different policies that seem a million miles apart, but they're all part of the collective goal of what you do as an organization, and so they do influence and impact each other. It's all about cause and effect. The whole process of figuring out and documenting what you do falls under the banner of what's called BPM, Business Process Management. It can be incredibly expensive and complex, or it can be bare bones and basic, but the worst kind is one that simply doesn't exist. Even having a little documentation is a step in the right direction. And according to Indeed.com, one of the most important things that any organization can do is to assess its existing processes and workflows and then analyze the outcomes of what they produce. Do they justify the amount of paid staff time that goes into them? or the material or equipment or software it takes to support them. And when you look at your processes, always do it through the mindset that in the end, you want to figure out how to declutter them. You want to be able to streamline them, maybe even automate some of them. And to recognize that this won't be a one afternoon exercise. It's not a one and done. It's endless. It's ongoing adjustment and tweaking. And that's actually a very healthy approach. When you start to document the processes that govern how you do things in your organization, you'll find that one of the best byproducts is consistency. You can't help but develop consistency when everybody has clear resource materials to go back to. When that's guiding how people do things, then it's not personal interpretation. It's the one clear voice of truth. The great thing, too, is that this will help reduce wasted time because you'll eliminate situations where you might have multiple people working on items that could be handled by one staff person. That's one of those things that falls under the guise of the Department of Redundancy Department. And maybe you have old processes that worked great four years ago. Do they make sense today? Are there other aspects of how you do business that have crept in that kind of render those old sets of procedures obsolete? Sometimes we rely on old and outdated procedures because it looks like way too much hassle to write new ones or to add to or augment what was there before. But no matter how time-consuming it may seem in the moment, in the long run, we'll be doing ourselves more than just a favor will be building an incredible, fluid platform to help us develop as our business grows. And our business should grow. We should have new processes and do things in new ways because that's a great indication that we're healthy and we're thriving, that we're trying new things, and that we're not stuck in the mud of yesterday's process. But sometimes, if you're in the middle of all that day-to-day, it can seem virtually impossible to even figure out how to analyze what you're doing. Maybe you find yourself there today. You know that things aren't operating as effectively or efficiently as they could, but you have no idea where to start on that long process of decluttering. If that describes the situation that you find yourself in vocationally, Valor can help. We have a division called Valor Excel that is dedicated to helping small businesses, nonprofits, and other organizations to get a clear perspective on how they're doing what they're doing. And a massive component of that is documenting your processes. We can meet with you, analyze and dissect what you do, and get it into a very usable written format that will enable any staff member even people who are completely unfamiliar with a particular job function, to have an understanding of what it takes to make it happen. If you'd like to find out how we could start helping you, please contact us at info at valorxl.com, and one of our team members will get back in touch with you. We can provide you with a document called Taking Your Organization's Temperature. It'll help give you a good overall perspective 
of the way your organization is structured and whether or not your process documentation is serving you in the way that it needs to. To learn more about all the services that we offer, you can visit us on Facebook at Valor Excel or our website www.valorxl.com. All the installments of the Valor Media Podcast are intended to help you thrive in both your personal and your professional life. So if there are topics that you'd like us to discuss in future installments, you can reach out to us at media at thevalorcenter.org. You can learn more about the overall mission and vision of Valor Ministries by visiting our website, www.thevalorcenter.org, or on Facebook at Valor Ministries. And if you do visit our website, be sure to check out the Shop tab, where you'll find a great selection of inspirational merchandise, hats, mugs, t-shirts, that will help keep you motivated on your journey forward. Please be sure to like and subscribe to this podcast. We publish a new episode each Monday. And if the Valor Media Podcast enriches your life, inspires you, blesses you, and encourages you, would you consider being a blessing to us? Would you financially assist us so that we can continue to bring you content? If so, you can visit us at www.thevalorcenter.org and click on the Donate button to give securely online. Or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope this will give you some inspiration to declutter the way you do things. Be sure to come back again next week as we'll be celebrating our second anniversary of the Valor Media Podcast. And until then, remember this, you were made to thrive.